Video games have grown to be one of the most popular means of entertainment, especially amongst the younger generation. The growth of the video gaming industry has been so prominent and incessant over the years that its estimated worth amounts up to billions of dollars currently. All the gamers out there relish, savor and compare the graphic delight of each video game with another. But have you even wondered how these games come to life? How are the iconic animations and other impressive aspects of a game are put together for our visual treat? So Pygame is a framework that is used for developing 2D games using Python as the base programming language. There are various tools and options available in Pygame that enables the addition of animation, sound, images, text or font, geometrical shapes and much more through which various interactive games are developed. In this session, we are going to look into the various facets of Pygame that could help you in setting sail for developing and improving your own gaming ideas. So put on your learning glasses and join me for a fun learning experience. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, I want to request you to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell so that you don't miss out on any new updates or video releases from Great Learning. If you enjoy this video, show us some love and like this video. Knowledge increases by sharing. So make sure you share this video with your friends and colleagues. Make sure to comment on the video. Any queries or suggestions and I will respond to your comments hey guys welcome to the session about pi game before going ahead let me tell you what all i am going to discuss in this session so we'll talk about what is a pi game how to do programming using pi game then we'll talk about how to install pi game moving ahead first we'll discuss the smallest hello world program in pi game then we'll try to understand the main loop that is also called as the main game loop of pi game to program any game using pygame the main loop is very important so we will try to understand what is it all about then we'll talk about the display window the display window consists of the pixel coordinates so all the details about pixel coordinates will be discussed in this section moving ahead how to use colors in pygame and also how to use rect object to draw rectangles will be discussed without adding an image to any game the development of a game is incomplete so we'll talk about how to add a image to a game window moving ahead we'll talk about a pi game blit which is also a function which is related to the images then we'll talk about all the geometrical shapes that is square rectangle ellipse polygon how to draw these geometrical shape shapes when it comes to pi game so game is not just about displaying the graphics but it's also about displaying text on the screen so how to display the text on the screen will be discussed next and last we'll talk about animation and sound without animating the objects you cannot develop any game and a sound adds a total effect to any game development so that i will discuss at the last using pygame programming now i'll talk about the introduction to pygame so what is pygame where is it used how is it used is what i'm going to talk about in this session so pygame is a wrapper package for sdl library which is used for developing a 2d games now what is sdl library so sdl stands for simple direct media layer so this layer acts as an interface or a layer between all the underlying multimedia hardware components when i say multimedia hardware components it is all those hardware components which we use for playing games like keyboard mouse joystick sound system all these comes under multimedia hardware components and sdl provides a layer or an interface to interact with these sdl also support cross platform execution that is any game developed using pi game or any rich multimedia application developed using pi game can be executed on various platforms that supports it we also say that python is a best choice to start with game game development and why is it said so the python was developed with one major goal and that goal was that the problem statements which are simple should be easy to implement and 
those are difficult should be straightforward to implement and definitely i would say python has met this goal that means that the syntax of python is very easy to learn as well as very easy to code with and as pygame is one of the module or library of python so even pygame provides a very simple syntax to use learn and implement there are various games that have been developed using pygame module one of the example is pirates of the caribbean let me dig into the history of pygame little bit and tell you that officially pygame was written by pete shiners and as pygame is a wrapper package for sdl the development of sdl and pygame started together in year 2000 although sdl was uh, developed or created by sam landinger but pygame was developed or written by pete shiners not just pygame there are other modules also in python that helps in development of games pilot and pygre are the other frameworks or libraries in pygame in python that helps to create games and if i talk about what is a prerequisite for learning pygame it is very simple that is if you know the basics of python programming you can start learning pygame when i say basics of python programming that is just how to deal with variables methods and loops if the basic understanding of python programming is clear you can go ahead and learn pygame now let me tell you how to install pygame so i'm going to tell you the installation steps for windows operating system so if you have windows operating system underlying and you want to install pygame there are three ways basically how you can install so if you want pygame to be installed separately as a application then you can go to www.python.org website and there you can go to download section and from download section you can download pygame and install but if python is already installed or any ide you are already using uh, to run python codes you can run pygame just as an additional library and how to install that so for that the first step will be to install it using pip so what is pip so pip is a python package manager which is like a tool which will help you install all the packages and libraries that are required for python so basically what pip does is it connects you to the online repository of python which has all the libraries and packages uh, required so using this pip command we can download or install pygame and the command to run that is py space minus m pip install minus u pygame and then double minus sign and user or it's very simple this runs most of the time if you have latest version of the python you can just just directly open command prompt and write these commands there make sure you should already have python installed otherwise it will give you an error saying pip is not recognized okay so you have to open a command prompt and there you just have to type pip install pygame without changing the directory or folder or the path anything simply open command prompt write pip install pygame so this will successfully install the pygame to your laptop or if you are using an ide so it is very easy simple and easy to include pygame using ide so i am going to explain you how to include the pygame library using pycharm so pycharm is also a application or an ide which helps you run the python codes right so let us see how we can install pygame using an ide pycharm so this is your uh, pycharm interface ide interface so here you have to go to file and from file you have to go to settings so once you click on the settings there will be various tabs on the left hand side which will help you manage various settings related to your pycharm so in this you have to go to project python project so this is the highlighted uh, text you can see here python project is what you have to click on and then in this there will be an option for python interpreter so click on that python interpreter so once you click here 
in my laptop already it is installed pygame so it is showing me over here itself but generally if you are doing it for the first time pygame will not be displayed over here okay so what you have to do in that case is go to this plus symbol and then it will show you what are the available packages which you can include in your pygame so here you have to just type pygame so you can see so many options here related to pygame the simple one that is just having the text pygame just click on that and click here as install package so once you click on this install package it it will take a minute or half a minute of time and you can see it shows here that package pygame installed successfully so once it is done you can directly close it from here okay now it is done so it now it will display it over here in this window as well so from here you have to just select pygame and then click on the apply button okay so once you click on this so it will say again package pygame installed successfully and then you can click okay from here so in this way in very few simple easy steps you can install pygame using pycharm ide so uh, i hope you have understood this there are two basic steps one is using pip command and the other one is using the ide a display window you can see here on the right side this is a display window which will display hello world in its title bar or which will set a caption as hello world here because this is the first step of any game development that is you have to create a game window and then other things will be added other graphics images sounds will be added to this window so let's do that first step using the simple hello world program the first statement here that is import pygame sys so import pygame is nothing but it is going to import this module pygame and module sys to the current program we are importing this because we are going to use various functions that are defined inside this module in our program import is a keyword which is used for importing the packages in python next statement is from pygame.locals import star it means also that we are importing all the functions and constants defined inside locals module which is inside pygame module there are two different import statements now what is the need of two different import statements here what is the difference between them try to understand so import pygame will import the functions even from pygame.locals import star will import everything in the module pygame.locals but if suppose there is a function defined as abc in module pygame and there is same function abc suppose defined inside pygame.locals but as i have used import pygame as a syntax to import this library i'll be using pygame.abc to call this function pygame.abc but if suppose this function abc is inside locals module then to use this function in our current program we will just be writing abc in this case we don't have to append the module name before the function name so that is the difference between the two different import statements over here in pygame.locals there are so many constants that are defined which we will be making use of in this program next line is pygame.init so pygame.init is calling a function in it and this function initializes the pygame module this is the first and the mandatory step for writing any game in using pygame next is display window equals to pygame dot display dot set mode as eight hundred and five hundred. So this line of code does is it creates a display window which is having eight hundred as a width and five hundred as a height of the window. Set mode is a function that takes one parameter. Now you must be thinking how one parameter there are two values. but there is one parameter itself that is a tuple it is a tuple that consists of two integers where the first integer is the width of the game window and second integer is the height of the window as i said it is one parameter so it has to be enclosed into a round bracket inside the parameter brackets 
so this will always be represented as a tuple of two integer values the set mode function is defined inside pygame dot display display window display underscore window this is a variable name which is a user defined variable this is a user defined variable you can give another any other name as well over here next is pygame dot display dot set underscore caption hello world so set underscore caption is also a inbuilt method inbuilt function that is used for setting the caption of the display window and that caption will be the string which is passed from here as a parameter so the string passed over here as a parameter is hello world so this hello world text will be set as a caption which you can see also in the output screen in the title bar hello world is displayed so this code that is pygame dot display dot set underscore caption hello world will display hello world in the title bar of the display window. Next is your while loop. This is also called as the main loop of the complete program. And the condition for this while loop is always said to be true. Meaning this is a loop where the condition is always true. There is no place where the condition can become false. So if there is no condition that directs to false, then in that case, there has to be something which will forcefully help to come out of the loop. And that is pygame.quit function and sys.exit function. So quit and exit are two different functions. Quit is defined inside pygame module and exit is defined inside sys module, which will help to forcefully quit the game or close the application. In this loop, every time some event happens or some changes happens in the game that is captured and is displayed on the window or displayed on the screen. You can see here pygame.display.update. So this update function is actually dis described inside pygame module. And this will do what? That any change or any action that is happening inside the game that will be captured and will be displayed on the window. And that is done using this update function. So this is a small snippet of a program that displays hello world in the title bar or as set as a caption for the game window. And it also displays a game window of width 800 and height 500 pixels. Now I'll talk about game loop and game state. So in any game development program using Pygame, there is a main game loop that is also called as main loop. And what it does is it does three things. The first one is it handles all the events raised. Then it updates the state of the game. And also it updates the screen or the window as per the game state. Now it is important here to understand what is game state. So game state is nothing but the value of a variable at any given point of time for a program. Let me try to explain you in a simple words through an example. Suppose there is a game which is developed and the game is about two players fighting among each other. So player A and player B which are fighting among each other and whichever player's health reduces to zero first, that player will lose the game. So initially their health status will be 100% and as the fight will continue, the health status of any one of the player will deteriorate slowly. And whichever player's health deteriorates first to zero, that player will lose the game. So initially when their health condition was 100%, both the player's health condition was 100%. That is one state of a game. When suppose player A health reduces to 80%, that is another state of the game. When the player A health reduces to 60%, that is the next state of the game. So this is what is meant by game state. The different state where the particular game lies into is what game state refers to here. Now, when does, does this game state changes? Whenever any event happens, and what is that event? 
event is when uh, as a user you click a mouse when you press a key on the keyboard you press a key on a joystick that is called as events so in this game example itself where two players are fighting among each other the fight will start when you'll press certain keys from the keyboard so pressing one key maybe the player a will raise its hand to fight so that is change of state from previous where the player was idle and to the next where the player has raised a hand to fight and that has happened why because there was an event and that event was you pressed a key from the keyboard so whenever this event happens the game state changes and what happens when the game state changes internally or programmatically this event is handled and what is the meaning of this handling the event it means that even on the screen on the display window the game state should change that is when a event happens and state from one game state changes to the other game state that change should also be reflected on the display window and these are the three activities that are done by the main game loop you can see here the small code snippet of the main game loop it is a while loop whose condition is always true so to come out of this loop either you have to quit the game or exit from the application so in this for each event in pi game dot event dot get so how is this event collected whenever we press a key from the keyboard there is a event happen so how this event information is sent for handling it that is done using get function of pi game so get is a function that keeps checking for any new event multiple times within a second and if it encounters any new event it is going to capture that and initialize it to the each event variable so this each event variable is a user defined variable here can have any name and once it is assigned to each event now what will happen is that this change of state should be updated to the display window as well and that is done by the last line of the code here that is update function so pygame.display.update is going to update this change in the state to the game window or display window or the final screen which a user is watching now if suppose the event which is done or created from the user side is a quit event meaning if suppose you have pressed on a close button that is at the corner of the display window or you have pressed somewhere quit to quit the game then in that case the application should close the main game loop should stop running so for that this is the code snippet that is if each event that is this variable is initialized with quit type of a event if each event dot type is equal to equal to quit so quit is a constant which is defined inside sys module so if this event is equal to quit then in that case we should quit the pi game initializing pi game was important at the beginning of any game development in pi game similarly quit is opposite of init so pi game dot quit is required to quit the pi game module or deinitialize the pi game module then system dot exit will completely close the application and exit from that application although pi game dot quit and sys dot exit does the same thing but calling pi game dot quit before sys dot exit is important because if directly you will use sys dot exit function then closing the application may hang the application so this is what the main game loop does and is all about game state now let's try to understand what is display window so display window consists of the pixels so it is important to understand what a pixel is over here so pixel is a point on a display window whenever we talk about programming and giving inputs the pixels to the program it is represented as a tuple of two values the two values the first one is the width of the window display window and the second one is the height of the display window suppose i give the width of the value as 300 and height value as 400 it means what that there are 300 pixels width wise and 400 pixels height wise now what this pixel is to understand that let us take a smaller value 
for width and height and try to understand so in this graphical representation over here the pixel value so width is taken as 4 and for height also it is taken as 4 so this is a grid of 4 by 4 pixel every rectangular box here represents one pixel and each pixel has a value which ranges from 0 to 255 all zero values represents black and all 255 values represents white initially it starts with all zero values that is the black screen but you can change the color of the screen depending upon the different combination of these values also the pixel representation uses cartesian coordinate system that means it has the cartesian coordinates to represent each pixel whose origin is on the top left corner so this point is the origin and moving horizontally there is x axis which starts from 0 moves to the positive the highest positive numbers and similarly y axis starts from the top left corner so first pixel coordinate will be 0 and 0 because x is 0 and y is 0 here and moving ahead vertically downwards y values increases to some infinite number or whatever is the width or height defined so each pixel value is represented using the cartesian coordinate for example this colored box here you can see the rectangular box which is colored with gray this has a cartesian coordinate and that is one on the x axis and one on the y axis so this is a pixel which has coordinates 1 and 1 so this is all about the pixels that are there in the display window let's talk about colors in pi game so as we know that there are three primary colors of light that is red green and blue and all these three colors of light is also supported while programming in pi game and they are rgb color values these are represented as a tuple of three integer values the three tuple integers are red green and blue the value of red green and blue ranges from 0 to 255 all zeros meaning it is a black color and if there is 255 value for red green and blue it means it is white color because maximum of red maximum of green and maximum of blue results to white if you want to give transparency to the colors then there is a fourth value also added to this tuple and that value is called as alpha value the range for alpha value is also between 0 to 255 if suppose the tuple values are 0 255 and 128 where the first value is the red color the second value is the green color the third value is the blue color and the fourth value is alpha which color does this tuple values represents as you can see this is 0 for red means no red color is there 0 for blue meaning no blue pigment is present in the color 255 for green it means maximum of green is present and then 128 for alpha value it means half transparency is there for green color so this is how we represent transparency in the colors if at all it is needed see the example over here if suppose the first value is 0 that is for red 255 for green 0 for blue and 0 for alpha it means that this is completely transparent there is zero value no value for alpha similarly if 255 is the value for alpha it means it is completely opaque representation of these colors in pi game is done using pi game dot color object and how is this color object created it is created using pi game dot color function pi game dot color function takes 3 to 4 parameters if you have to pass just red green and blue color combination then three parameters will be passed to pi game dot color function if you have to take transparency into account as well then red green blue and alpha value that is four parameters will be passed to the color function so that's all about using colors in pi game now let's talk about pi game blit so what is pi game blit this is related to images when you add images on the display window for any game 
there pig and blood comes into picture so when we add a image to a display surface a different surface object called as image surface object is created but to display this image on the actual display surface you have to copy the image from image surface object to the display surface object and copying the image from image surface object to display surface object is called as blitting or a process of blit so just creating an object or creating a image will not render it into the display surface to actually display it or render it on the display surface you have to follow the process of blitting that is copying the content from one surface to the other surface and the image formats that are supported here in pygame are png jpg gif and bmp so these are the image formats which you have to use if you want to display the image on the display surface what is the function now that is used for blitting in pygame so it is the method blit blit is a method that is used for displaying or copying the image from the image surface object to the display surface object blit takes multi different parameters because blit is a function that is overloaded in various forms in pygame one of the form is this where blit function takes two parameters the first one is the source image that is the source image object and the second one is which location on the screen you want to display the image on to similarly there are other overloaded forms of the blit functions as well which can be used depending upon the requirement of the application or requirement of the game which you are developing now let's discuss how to add an image to game window so here is a small code snippet which i'm going to talk about that will completely display any given image to the game window or a display window so the first statement for this code snippet is import pygame so you have to import the pygame module that is the first step and then the initialization of the pygame module is required so that is done by pygame.init so init is a function that will help in initializing the pygame module next as a color that is defined for the display window initially or by default the color of the display window will be black that is all values of r g and b that is red green and blue will be zeros so here i have defined all the values of red green and blue to be 255 that represents a white color so next line of code is that you have to create a display window using set mode function that will take a tuple as an parameter which will have two values one represents the width and the other represents the height of the display window next statement is it sets the caption that is display image so this is a string which is passed as a parameter here which will set the caption of the display window as display image now this is the part or the line of code that will actually load an image to your program that is done using the function load which is defined in the pygame module itself so pygame.image.load so this is the inbuilt method which you have to use to load any image in your program then the parameters that this function take is your the read and write writes on the image and then the path where the image is stored on your computer or a desktop so suppose i have stored the image in the c drive and the name of the image is image1 and it is a png image so you have to provide the complete path over here from where the image is being loaded so this will do what load the image and it will create a image surface object with the name of image name so image name is a user defined variable which will be initialized with the image surface object for the image image1.png now in the main game loop that is while loop we have to blit this image or copy this image surface object image to the actual game window surface object and that is done using blit function so display surface display underscore surface dot blit so display underscore surface is also a user defined variable which is representing the object for the display window 
you can see here the name that is display underscore surface. So display underscore surface is a user defined variable that is representing the use window, the game window. So you have to blit which image, this image, image underscore name onto the display surface that is display underscore surface. And as a parameter, the second parameter of blit function, you have to pass the coordinates. So zero and zero coordinate represents the origin. And we know that in any display window, the origin is the top left corner of the screen or of the window. So the image will start from here and go to whatever is the width and height of that image, which is being loaded. It will extend till there. Make sure your complete display window is larger than the image size. Image width and height should be smaller than the display window image and width and height. Okay, so it will start from 0, 0, that is origin, and extend accordingly. So that is the coordinates passed over here. That is the starting coordinate from where the image will start or will be represented on the display window. And that is done using blit function, which is taking two parameters. Rest part of the main game loop remains the same, which will check for the event using get function and then if the event type is quit, then it will deinitialize the Pygame module and quit the application or close the application. And if the event type is not quit, then it is going to update every time a new event happens. And what is it going to update? The screen or the game window. Depending upon which event is arrived, it will update the game window. So the rest part of the main game loop remains the same. Other than just these two functions, one is your load function, which will load the image and the other is blit function that will copy the image from image surface object to the actual window surface object. So that's how we add an image to the game window. Now let's talk about rect object. So rect object is nothing but rectangular object. This is used for displaying or drawing a rectangular object on the screen. So you may have a requirement in the game application to draw various shape, shapes that may be a rectangle, that may be a square. So right now I'm going to talk about a rectangular object or a rectangular shape which you are going to draw. So it's not just the shape, it is a complete object. So there are two ways by which you can represent a rectangular area on a display surface or on a window. The first one is by displaying four integer values, which is a tuple of four integers where the first integer is the x coordinate, second integer is the y coordinate, and this x and y coordinate is measured from the top left corner. The third coordinate is your, or the third value is your width of the rectangle, and fourth value is the height of the rectangle. Second way by which you can represent a rectangular area is your pygame.rect object. And how we create this pygame.rect object? Using pygame.rect itself. So you can see here pygame.rect and then it takes four parameters. The first one is again the x coordinate from where the rectangular object is going to start. That is the top left corner again. And 40 is the y coordinate of the top left corner of the rectangle. 200 is the width and 300 represents its height. So the rectangular area which will be drawn using this pygame.rect example is of width 200, height 300, and it will start from coordinate 30, 40. And 30, 40 will be the top left corner of the rectangular object. Now let us see a complete program how to draw a rectangular object on a game window or a display window. So you can see this code snippet. So this code snippet is going to do what is that suppose this is your display window. It is going to draw a rectangular object from the pixel coordinates 40, 30 with 100 and 100 as a width and height. Okay, let's see the code and try to understand this. So the remaining part of the code that is import pygame where you have to import the pygame module. Pygame.init will initialize the pygame module with init function. Then it will create display surface with 800 as a width and 500 as a height. Then will come to the main loop of the Pygame program. Here, every event will be captured by get function. Then 
after this main at the end of the main loop there is a code for drawing a rectangular object what is the meaning of all these lines of code let's understand so pygame dot draw dot rect so this draw dot rect is a function which is defined in pygame module which is going to be used to draw a rectangle meaning what properties that rectangle is going to have and where is it going to draw will be specified by this function so this function is going to take two parameters the first parameter will be your the display surface so this draw dot rect is going to take three parameters as an input the first parameter will be the surface on which the rectangular object has to be drawn so in this example or code snippet you can see here display surface is a variable which is having a reference to the window or the display window so display surface is where we are going to draw this rectangle that will be the first parameter second parameter will be a tuple which will define the color for the rectangular object so red green and blue three integer values will form a tuple and that will represent the color of the rectangular object the third parameter is the rectangular object itself that is which rectangular object we have to draw and this is what we saw in the example a moment earlier pygame dot rect which will have four parameters which will tell the start point in terms of x and y coordinates so x coordinate is 40 here y coordinate is 30 here and the next two parameters are width and height so width and height of the rectangular object in this program defined is 100 and 100 so this is the third parameter which this draw dot rect is going to take so display surface the first parameter color combination for the object the second parameter and third parameter is the rectangular object itself then there is a code that is pygame dot display dot flip now why have i not used here pygame dot display dot update so till now we were using update function to update any change in the state of a game on the display window but here i am using display dot flip so flip also does the same thing but with a minor difference flip also updates the display screen but flip only updates the certain portion of the complete screen not the complete display window so here as i am drawing the rectangle only in this in the particular area like this is the display window so only in this particular area i am drawing the rectangular object so why to update the complete display window that's the reason i have used flip here so flip will do what only this particular area where the change in state has happened only that area will be updated so this is the code snippet for adding a rectangular object to the display area or to the final screen now let's talk about drawing different geometrical shapes in pygame so not just rectangle you can draw various different geometrical shapes on a given surface and those shapes are square circle rectangle ellipse or any given polygon not just these shapes but also if you want to draw a single line that can be done in pygame using certain functions so for each of these shapes being drawn there are different functions to be used these functions are inbuilt defined or predefined in pygame module the basic function is draw so draw is a function that is defined inside pygame module which will be using to draw all the shapes but depending upon which shape you want to draw the draw function will be extended for example suppose you want to draw a polygon so the function which will be using is pygame dot draw dot polygon which will take four parameters in general why i am saying in general because these functions can be overloaded and overridden as well so the four parameters are display surface color point list and width display surface that is the first parameter is nothing but that surface object where the shape has to be drawn the geometrical shape has to be drawn second parameter is the color of the geometrical shape which is being drawn third is a point list so it is a tuple or a list of points that will tell the starting coordinates x and y coordinates of the rectangular object and the width and height of the rectangular object this point list can differ depending upon which geometrical shape is being drawn next is your or the last parameter is the width that is the width of the geometrical shape that is the lines which will form that geometrical shape what is the width of those lines the outer lines what is the width of those lines is the fourth parameter now let us see for what are the different functions for different geometrical shapes 
so to draw a line you have to mention the four parameters the fifth five parameters for the line function so this line function is a part of draw function itself which is defined inside pi game module so it's a constructor function which takes five parameters the first one is a display surface the surface where you are going to draw that line then the color of the line will be displayed here this is again a tuple of three values r g and b red green and blue color then the starting point of the line and ending point of the line as also has to be mentioned as i said depending upon the different geometrical shapes the parameters being passed for the different functions will be different and then the last parameter will be the width of the line being drawn similarly for circle there are these parameters so circle is a function which is used for drawing a circle the first parameter is display surface again where the circle will be drawn and then second is the color which is the tuple of three integers red green and blue then you have to mention the center point to draw a circle we need a center point and we need a radius so that's the reason the as a parameter you have to pass these values center point and radius and definitely the width of the circle which is being drawn similarly for eclipse you have to pass a display surface on which the eclipse will be drawn to the function eclipse which is also defined inside pi game module draw dot eclipse is a function second parameter to draw dot eclipse function is the color of the eclipse being drawn third function is the bounding rectangle now what is this bounding rectangle so to you can see here in this image being drawn there is a eclipse and if i draw a rectangle which is touching the outer surface or the surface of the eclipse this is called as your bounding rectangle a rectangle which bounds or which completely contains the eclipse where if you draw, where each side of a rectangle act as a tangent to the eclipse this is the bounding rectangle so you have to pass here a tuple of four values as a bounding rectangle and those tuple of four values is nothing but the four parameters to draw a rectangle where the first parameter is x coordinate second is y coordinate third is the width of the rectangle fourth is the height of the rectangle so this bounding rectangle will have four values that is a tuple of four integers and definitely the last one width of the ellipse being drawn to draw a rectangle the draw dot rect function is used which is also having four parameters the first is the display surface on which the rectangle will be displayed then the color which is a tuple of three integer values red green and blue then the rectangle tuple so this is also the tuple of four integer values which has x y coordinates and width and height of the rectangle and definitely the width of the rectangle has to be passed also as a parameter so these are the different functions which you can use to draw different geometrical shapes on a given surface you can develop a game or an application where you require the knowledge of or where you require to draw all these shapes geometrical shapes such kind of small simple games can also be developed so in that case you can make use of these functions to draw geometrical shapes let's talk about how can we add text to the game window so not just graphics images sounds and animation but also you can add text to the game window or the to the display window and how that can be done using font method so text can be drawn on the display window using font method so this font method is also defined inside pi game module there are lots of ways by which uh, the font objects can be created one of the way was using the different forms of font method in sys module there is sys.font method that can be used to draw a particular text in a given font style and a font size so font method here has the name as sys font so this is a function that takes two parameters that is first one is your the style of the font like times new roman arial calibri so these are the font styles and then the size of the font and as these font styles and font size are system dependent what the system supports it depends on that that's the reason it is defined under sys module as well then there is a render method that is used which will actually create a surface object with that text being drawn on that 
so a text cannot be displayed directly it has to be mapped to a display surface and then that display surface is going to be blitted over the actual display window and this is done using render method so render method is going to create a surface object on which that text will be drawn let's see the format of the render function so font underscore variable dot render so this render function will take these parameters the first first one is the text to be displayed what text you want to display that has to be mentioned as a first parameter as a string in single quotes or also on double quotes you can mention here then the anti aliasing effect so this is a value a uh, decimal value actually so this is what is anti aliasing so anti aliasing is a kind of a graphical technique that blurs the edges of a uh, text being drawn or a uh, any shape being drawn on the surface on the screen and why it blurs the edges to remove that blocky effect to give a smooth effect to any line or a text or shape being drawn the edges are given a blur effect and that is called as your anti aliasing so this anti aliasing smoothens the things being drawn on the screen so that is passed as a parameter to render function then the color of the text to be drawn and also the background color if at all you want for the text so this background color will only be at the background of a given text not on the entire screen so this is a render method or a function which is used to create surface object then a rectangular object is needed to position that particular text like where the text will be drawn on the entire screen so for that first the text has to be included in a rectangular object and then that rectangular object is displayed on the screen so for that there is a get underscore rect method using this get underscore rect method will be able to draw a rectangular object in which the particular text will be drawn so these are the few important methods or functions in pygame which you have to use if you want to add text to the game window there are various other formats also of the font method which can be explored and which can be applied depending upon how complex application you are developing in pygame now let's talk about animation any game development is incomplete without adding animation effect to it and so what is animation let us try to understand first how is this animation actually created and then i'll tell you that the same logic is used even to write programs so animation is nothing but moving still images very quickly in front of your eyes try to understand this with this small example over here so this is suppose a series or a sequence of blocks so four blocks are here in the first second i have colored this first block after that i have colored the second block after some point of time i colored the third block and then after some point of time i colored the fourth block so if i display these blocks in front of you as an image and in the first second you see that the first block was colored in the second second you see the second block colored in the third second you see the fourth third block being colored and in the fourth second you see the fourth block being colored so if this four images moves really fast in front of your eyes what illusion will you have that this block the colored block is moving from left to right yes or no so this is what the animation effect is and the same logic of moving an image very quickly in front of the eyes of a viewer is used even in programming so if i talk technically what animation is about so animation is nothing but drawing pictures or images on the screen very quickly into different angles so same image is drawn at different angles and is passed in front of the viewer very quickly in one second that is what animated images now when i say very quickly so it there is a unit to measure that that is frames per second 
and that is called as your frame rate. So number of frames displayed in a given second by a program is called as frame rate and its unit is frame per second. The frame rate is very important here when you write a program to animate a given image or a text or anything for that matter. Why is it important? Because every screen or a monitor on which the game application is going to run will have its own frame rate, right? Every graphical display or a monitor screen has its own FPS frame uh, per second rate. If that rate and the rate by which you have developed your program or the animation rate which you have used in the game application which we have developed, if it is different, if there is quite a difference between that and if there is no match between those two frame rates, then the display or your execution of the game, the application will not be that smooth. And that's the reason frame rate is important here to understand. So in Pygame, there is a function called as clock. So this clock function defined inside Pygame module will help you establish a coordination between the frame rate of the monitor, the actual frame rate of the screen on which game will run and the frame rate which is being used in the program to run the game. So how will that happen? So what we can do is that in our program, we can define a variable that is assigned a frame per second rate per second rate value. So suppose in this uh, small code snippet, I have assigned a FPS value to be 40 and using the clock method, I'm trying to get the actual FPS or the frame rate for the monitor or the screen where this game I'm going to run. So this will give me pygame.time.clock will give me the actual frame rate. So that I'll store it in a variable actual underscore FPS. This is a user defined variable. And then we'll try to map this actual FPS with the FPS defined in the program. And that can be done using tick function. So how is this tick function used? The actual FPS variable dot tick function and it will take the parameter, the FPS rate or the frame rate value which we have defined in the program. As a parameter, it is passed over here. So this will do what? It will coordinate or it will make sure that the game application which you have developed, its frame rate should not go more than the defined value over here that is 40. And it establishes a coordination between the actual frame rate of a screen on which game will run and the game which you are developing. Now I'll talk about how to include sounds in any game. So to include sound as a background music for any game development using Pygame, the first thing you need is to store the file in a proper file format. And the file formats which Pygame supports are WAV, MP3 and OGG files. So once your file is ready, the next step you can go is include that sound into the game. And to include that sound into the game, there are various functions that Pygame supports. There are inbuilt functions in Pygame library which can be made use of to load sound, to play the sound, include it as a background music, to what duration you want that particular background music to play. So all these uh, functionalities can be implemented using various functions that are there in Pygame. But the first step is that you have to have a file with a proper file format. Once that is ready, Next step programmatically is that you have to create a sound object and to create a sound object, we will make use of a constructor function that is defined inside Pygame library and that constructor function is pygame.mixture.sound. So sound is that uh, function which will be used to create a sound object. So the syntax for the same is pygame.mixture.sound. And in the bracket as a parameter, you have to pass the file name with a proper file format. So along with the extension, the file name should be entered as a parameter. And then this has to be stored in a sound object. So this will be any variable sound underscore object underscore variable is a variable name given by me. So this can be any variable name, whichever you prefer. So once this function will be called and it, its resultant will be stored in this variable, which is nothing but a sound object. So once the sound object is ready, you can now play the sound which is stored in this file, file underscore name dot wav. You can pause the sound, you can stop it. So all these can be done once your sound object is created. 
there are various other functions that are defined for different activities to deal with sound the first one is to play the sound now so to play the sound the sound object will be used with dot operator and then the play function so sound object dot play will be the function that is used for playing the sound and once this play function is called it's not like your program will wait until the complete sound uh, is played suppose a sound which you have added or the music which you have added is of 2 minutes so it isn't that 2 minutes your program is going to wait until and unless that complete sound is played and then it will go to the next program next uh, line of code in the program but as soon as dot play will be called the music will start playing and also the program will continue its execution it won't wait for the music to finish so that's what and how play method is used then if you want to pause the uh, music for some time uh, in between somewhere throughout the application then in that case sleep method is used and the format for that is time dot sleep so time dot sleep is a method which is used and as a parameter you have to pass here the number of seconds you want the sound to be paused for suppose i want 2 seconds or 3 seconds the sound should not be played so in that that duration the number has to be passed here as a parameter to the sleep method suppose you want to abruptly or immediately stop playing the sound at some point in the game then dot stop method is used so stop is a function which is used and the to call the stop function you have to use sound object so sound object dot stop will be called there is no parameter passed to the stop method so these are the functions which will be used that is play sleep stop out of which play and stop is the method that has to be used along with the sound object because that's a particular sound you want to play or stop now once this uh, file is ready which is having a sound to load that file to your game in py game the function used is load and it is also a constructor function which is defined inside py game dot mixture dot music dot load and in the bracket as a parameter you have to pass the file which you want to load the name of the file can be passed here suppose the name of the file is file1 so file1 dot wav so this is your syntax or a function which is used for loading a particular file to be played as a background music there are various other functions which will help you properly incorporate a music or a sound uh, in your game using pygame that can be done which can be explored as and when you are developing the game using pygame now let's summarize the entire course so what all we started is we discussed everything about pygame so different aspects of pygame is what we saw in this entire course starting from the very basic concepts of how to install pygame to how to develop a interactive game or an interactive application in pygame we discussed everything about the display window how to create a display window a small program example we saw and then what does the display window consist of that is your pixels so we discussed about pixels what are pixels how is it arranged how are the colors defined for the object and those display window that is the pixels in pygame not just that but how to draw various objects starting from a rectangle object to any geometrical shape geometrical shapes like square rectangle polygon and also a line how can these be drawn how can the different aspects of uh, these geometrical shapes be can be dealt with in any game development or in any game application is also discussed any game is incomplete without the animation and sound so lastly we also discussed how to animate an object how to animate an image in a game development as well as how to include a background music or a sound so the basics of all the aspects related to game development has been covered in this course thank you
If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, I want to request you to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell so that you don't miss out on any new updates or video releases from Great Learning. If you enjoy this video, show us some love and like this video. Knowledge increases by sharing. So make sure you share this video with your friends and colleagues. Make sure to comment on the video. Any queries or suggestions and I will respond to your comments.